Hey guys, Robert with 3D Printscape. Today we're going to talk about Cure 4E. I'm going to cover some of the enhancements they made, uh, talk about a couple of things that I do, and kind of go over some of the settings that I'm using. Uh, I know I'm kind of a little bit behind on this considering it came out a little while ago. Uh, I held off on making this video because initially I went back to 4.7 for a while and I know a lot of you guys did as well just because I was having some random issues. Um, I kind of got past those issues. Um, I just tweaked the profiles a little bit more. Uh, though their default profiles have gotten a lot better. I've only had to make a couple small tweaks on them. Um, I will go over what I'm using and then I'll link to the website that I have all of my profiles listed. Um, those are free of charge. You just go there and download them. They'll provide a good starting point. Or you can just copy uh, the default ones and then uh, make the tweaks there if you want to go that route as well. Uh, if you have any questions during the process, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And if you haven't already, make sure you guys hit the like button and subscribe. It'll really help us grow. Thanks. All right, so first let's talk about the three main enhancements they provided. Uh, the first one is um, if you move an object below the build surface, it highlights it uh, so it makes it very clear where it's going to cut it off, where before it was somewhat unclear. Uh, again, this is just talking about it. Uh, in a couple of minutes, I'll jump over to the computer and show you what it looks like. Uh, the next one is they change the uh, way they rearrange objects. If you want to put multiple objects on the build plate and let it kind of um, find the best layout for you. Uh, in 4.7, they had the feature, uh, but it had a wider gaps. So we're in 4.8, they brought those gaps in. Um, the layout is a little bit weird, uh, but it's supposed to be the most efficient for the printer. Uh, so I'll show you that as well. And then the last thing is, um, which I guess this one isn't really a huge thing for me, but they supposedly enhance some of the load features. So if you're loading projects between computers and such, uh, they did some enhancements there. I don't typically do that. I'm just in there making a change to a print and then printing it. Um, but I know some people uh, that's pretty important for them. In addition to that, um, they call out a couple bug fixes. Uh, one of them is around um, just blobs that might happen if you're trying to use curved objects. Uh, I never really had the issue before. I don't know if you guys have or not, but I wanted to call it out for those of you who might have. All right, so let's talk about a couple of the issues that I saw initially, or I've heard about. Um, one of them is if you're trying to print a temperature tower, um, the change at layer height wasn't working for either some specific uh, mainboard version or firmware version. Uh, it was working for me flawlessly uh, with my SKR Mini and on the Marlin 2.0 firmware line, uh, but I know a lot of you guys, I had at least a dozen plus comments saying that it wasn't changing temperature the way it should be. Uh, there is a workaround if you are having that issue and I'll link to a video I did on that in the description below uh, but basically you got to change from layer height to change on um, layer number basically and then another thing I heard about which I didn't really see too much of um, but I didn't really test it too much initially was a lot of people were complaining that they were getting bad prints um, like I said, I didn't really see that, uh, but I know there were enough comments that led me to believe that it was actually a problem. Um, for me, if I was having an issue, it was probably just because I was messing with my printer a lot. I've been just doing a lot of mods and stuff for the video, uh, so this printer isn't exactly always ready to be used at any given time. <laughs> Sometimes I gotta go back and make a couple changes before I can use it. Uh, hopefully I'll get to a point where I'll be finishing up all of my mods pretty soon, and then I'll create a video kind of covering all of that. And then um, I just picked up an Ender 5. I'll probably start working on that as well. And then I've got my Taz six back there that I use if this one's uh, unavailable. All right, so let's go ahead and jump over to the computer, uh, load Cura, and then walk you through a couple things. All right, guys, so I'm here at the computer. I uh, went ahead and loaded an object. So the first thing I wanted to show you is what happens if you bring any part of it below the build surface. So let's go ahead and click on it, and then uh, we can go ahead and just drag him down. And if you look here, you can clearly see where it's gonna be cut off, uh, where before, uh, with 4.7 and back, you could kind of guess around here it would be cut off, but it doesn't give you that exact detail. Um, so I kind of like that feature. It's really nice, simple, and it just really makes the user experience um, a lot better to me. Uh, so let me go ahead and reset that back to standard position. All right, next I wanted to show you the alignment. All right, so here, if we're going to click on it and let's just multiply it, let's say we wanted to print five of them, all right? And 
it now multiplies the object and it aligns them closely together, giving you uh, supposedly giving you the fastest build time. I don't know if it makes a huge difference if you kind of move these around a little bit as long as it's this close. Um, but basically what it's trying to do is utilize the build plate as much as possible. They did have this feature in 4.7, um, but it was further away. Uh, the gap was probably three or four times that. Uh, so if you're really trying to maximize the build surface, um, you really couldn't without modifying again afterwards. Um, let me just throw a couple random objects in here again, uh, then show you what it looks like. All right, guys, so I went ahead and threw a random fan duct cover that I had the object for and a calibration cube. Um, let's just say I wanted to print three calibration cubes, so I'll add two copies and then one fan duct cover and then the six copies of Baby Yoda. Um, trying to arrange this typically would take a couple minutes, uh, but if you just right click and go down to arrange all models, it's going to give you the most efficient path. And if you can't fit it all in the build plate, it'll give you a warning. So let's say if I wanted to add um, one more of these, let's see if that'll actually fit. Uh, range our models so it kicked it off to the side saying that it can't actually get it to fit which honestly I would question let me just try that again um, because I'm pretty sure I can get this on here maybe so let me go to move these off to the side a little bit and see if I can actually get this to work and the logic might be a little bit weird uh, when you're using multiple objects like this um, So that's what we do here. Let's remove this. Put that there. All right, so clearly I am able to get all this on the build plate. Uh, let me go ahead. Now that I actually have it all on there, uh, let me see if I can arrange models now, see if that works. Yeah, it went ahead and kicked it off again. So if you do run into this type of issue, um, keep in mind that you might actually be able to get it to fit. Uh, this is meant to be more of just a quick alignment and it's not gonna necessarily give you the best positioning if you're using different object type. I think if I only used one type here, uh, it would do much better. All right, the last thing I wanted to do is try to maximize the number of uh, a single object on the build plate and see how that works out. Uh, some of these simpler objects, it can do a better job with. Um, I guess, like I said, I didn't like that fan duct cover. It worked with one, but anytime I added two on there, it just did not like that. Um, so I think the logic can still use some improvement, but it's definitely better than it was in 4.7. All right, so let's just go ahead and multiply this. Uh, I don't know, let's go with 20. I know that I won't be able to get 20 on here, but I want to see what it does. I guess I can get 20 of them on here. So let's go ahead and uh, add a couple more. Let's go ahead and add five more. Yeah, so at some point it does really start to struggle once you get beyond a certain boundary it's hard to tell exactly what that is uh, but keep that in mind if you're trying to uh, completely maximize uh, the build surface at this point you can still probably drag a couple of these in there I know for sure I can get one up here um, let me see here I think I might be able to get all five of these on here if I turn them and kind of played a little bit I could probably make that work, but um, I guess the last thing I wanted to point out here was in this scenario, if you did put more on there uh, than the logic can handle, if you were to arrange all models again, it's going to kick those back out. Uh, so just keep that in mind. All right, so now let me just go ahead and delete these five here. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about profiles really quick. Um, it comes with the standard four and then 
I created three different ones. Again, these profiles I have available on my site. You can just uh, click on the link below and go there and download them. Uh, they're a good starting point. I have them broken out in two different categories. I just have general and then Ender 3 specific ones. Uh, the, they may or may not be different. And then once I get the Ender 5, I'll probably do the same thing. But if I do any specific tweaks to a profile for a printer, uh, they'd be under that specific category. But overall, uh, the profiles that they provided are getting better, but there are a couple changes. Let me go ahead and discard that. So let me just walk through here and just point out a couple of things you should really pay attention to. So obviously your layer height, uh, for standard I have 0.2, uh, for high I have 0.12. Um, then going down the Z seam alignment, you want it to have sharpest corner and then use smart hiding. Uh, if you want more information on what these actually do, uh, there's a great plugin I recommend using. It's called Settings Guide, and you can just get it from the marketplace over here. Um, just go ahead and search for uh, Settings Guide. It typically comes up pretty quick. See, so you, you would see it here, and then you just click on it and install. Uh, you will have to restart Cura after you install it, though. All right, so what I wanted to show you here was on Z seam alignment, it goes into detail on exactly what each one of them does. Uh, so if you want to, if you had any questions about the different ones, you can just go into here and read up on them. Uh, this is probably the best overview that I've seen on basically all of the settings in Cura at a single point. Uh, it goes into a lot of detail. All right, so let's go ahead and close out of that. Um, next thing that I do, well, obviously you want to make sure that you're setting your infill correctly for what you're printing. Uh, I did do a video covering uh, what I recommend for different types of prints, and I'll link to that as well. And then going down a little bit further, uh, you got your uh, temperature for the filament. If you're using a new filament that you haven't ran a temperature tower on, or if you've never ran a temperature tower for any of the filament, I highly recommend you do that. It'll just tell you what the best temperature for that filament is. And it doesn't take long. I think the prints are typically like an hour. All right, um, and then the other major thing if you're using one of the standard ones is you want to enable acceleration and jerk control. Uh, the default settings are fine, but I've gotten just a little bit smoother of a print with them enabled. And then, um, well, the retraction should be enabled on the default profile, but if not, you want to make sure that's enabled as well. And then combing mode is not in skin. And that's really everything that I wanted to show you in Cura here. Like I said, I didn't go into too much detail here on uh, each individual setting. Um, I don't think that that would be worthwhile in this video specifically. Uh, if you do want a video like that, uh, let me know and I can try to set that up. And also, like I mentioned, I do have uh, profiles on my site that I recommend as good starting points. You can just go ahead and download them and import them. So if you wanted to import one of the profiles, you just go up to uh, Preferences, uh, Config, and go down to Profiles, and then Import. So then you can just grab the profile that you were working with and just go ahead and import it. And then same for Export. If you want to save it, you can just click on Export, and then it will export it out. If you have any questions about anything I covered or would like to see anything else, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. All right, so there was a quick overview of Cura 48. Like I said, I'm a little bit behind on this video uh, just because of some of the issues I've heard about and saw myself, uh, but I think I've worked through all of them and I at least have workarounds for a couple things that I've been seeing and the benefits outweigh the cons at this point, at least to me. Um, I'm able to get much smoother prints using Cura 48 than I was with 4.7. Uh, if you do run into any issues, though, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below. I would love to hear about it, see if we can try to fix it. Uh, but if we can't, I'd just like to understand what the issues are. And also, if you have any questions about the video, again, go ahead and leave a comment below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.